All right, guys, take a look at my veto bag. This is my oldest veto bag. I believe this was the, I believe this was the first one I bought. Mm. It's been about a year, I think. So, see how it's holding up. Um, this this bag is used for general. It's basically the bag that I grab when I have to do any kind of work on the roof. No matter what discipline that's going to be in. Uh, but typically I'm going to be working on uh, sealing appendages, maybe removing them, replacing fans, working on air conditioners, installing solar panels, plumbing vents, things like that. You know, stuff that's on the roof mainly uh, for air conditioners and then also like if I'm doing slide rooms and things like that I'm gonna grab the general bag you know because this covers different things in the camper whereas I have plumbing bag gas bag and then inside the truck electrical bag for those specific tasks I have a loadout that's specific for that but this bag is kind of my all-purpose bag that I mainly grab when I'm going on the roof. Uh, as you can see, this bag, let's tell you what it is first, alright? They call it the uh, the Tech Pack. So, uh, this is the Tech Pack. I think this is the largest um, bag that they have. It's the... Um, It's, it's definitely the, the largest uh, backpack that they ha they have. And I'm just looking it up really quick so I can get the prices. So Amazon sells it for 300 and uh, Vito sells it for 300 so they're, they're both on the same price. I order all mines from Vito because if you order it from a third party, Vito doesn't do the warranty registration or anything like that. You have to do it. And uh, But if you buy it directly from Vito, then they take care of warranty and promotion. So if they're offering a free bag, they'll take it. They'll, they'll take care of the registration and, and everything like that. So uh, $2.99, that's what this bag goes for. And I've had this one for probably about a year okay it's holding up good man I mean I don't have any problems with it let's take a look at what's all in it and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through it you can so it has pockets right here which I don't think I have anything in there because that pocket's so tight uh, oh I got some business cards in there so in that little tight pocket business cards and then inside of the big flap where I can hold bigger tools. I'm running a DCF 801. This is very good guys. This uh, magnetic uh, tray by Snap-on with the, uh, you know, it pops out and it, it can separate. Very good tray guys. Um, use this almost every day. It's, the, it's called the Mag Dish. That's the Mag Dish. And of course, you've seen it and heard about it many times. This blue point set with all the different bits in it. Pretty awesome. And then there's space so you can put extra stuff in it too, which I utilize. Okay. These are adjustable on the tightness of these uh, straps here. Now inside this, inside this other pouch, I keep... I think my double squares. Yeah. So I get my one, two, and three double squares, mainly just using the number two on the Thor products. Mostly they're motorhomes, but they got a lot of the fifth wheels use it too. And then a metric set of uh, nut driver bits from Tecton. All right. A couple of other little bits on the inside. And uh, oh, this is pretty cool, guys. This is the Walt swivel adapter. So it could be a straight, or you can pull the collar up and it lets you get in at an angle 
when you're trying to work in tight cabinet or something like that you can get really close to the wall and get a screw out this thing is pretty awesome because it's in this pouch like this I never think about it I need to uh, probably put it somewhere else where I can remember about it a little more where it's at but that's that and I, I'm gonna consider all this to be kind of like the outside of the bag so move on all right on the side you get tape loop I'm running a little DeWalt right angle attachment I've had this for several years it's really good it you know keeps you from having to buy a right angle dedicated drill as it goes on an impact driver you drill and it works really well plus the head of that is much smaller than like my Milwaukee right angle or my skill so sometimes I still have to pull that out when I got to get in some tight spots a couple of screwdrivers husky on the uh, quarter inch flat and snap on on the Phillips on the other side I got my ideal it's like a little um, it's a 12 and one little flip dealio you know and then nut drivers so different like nested nut drivers of different sizes I don't use this as nearly as much as I should um, but when I'm on the roof working on the air conditioners I do uh, use a little more because it's a uh, it's convenient when it has the nut drivers for taking apart some of those uh, ducted units. Extension, this one's made by Irwin, and I keep a little sharpie. I normally keep a tape on here, but they right, they live in the side of the door pockets because it always falls off. It always gets knocked around. And then <coughs> some D hooks for, uh, you know, whatever you want to attach to the bag now the back of the bag has a great cushion it's very comfortable to take this up the bag and uh, the reason why that new little giant epic ladder is such a game changer is this bag weighs over 50 pounds and when you have a ladder like that epic with the safety rails where you can step on the very top rung hold on to the handles and keep walking through the pass-through um, it really helps when you have a lot of weight trying to pull you down off of the ladder so this is exclusively you know what I'm gonna be grabbing when I'm going on the roof when you pull this little bracket out from the handle which this handle is super beefy everything is overbuilt on this bag um, we get to the back of the bag and in the back of the bag you know I got my Havac tape whenever you're doing an air conditioner service they never tape up the air conditioner so you need to do it after you open it up I have a nice snap-on bit set so we got the Havac tape the snap-on bit set this one you can see the part number on that and let's see what's inside this is one of my favorite um, snap-on bit sets because uh, <coughs> I have some standard like bits but then I have my chucks you know my quarter inch three eighths um, adapters for uh, running sockets and then there's another little one for like a uh, like a bit ratchet or whatever so that's pretty cool. There's the uh, sleeve, little quarter inch hex adapters. So these can be a little longer because these are little one inch bits. But this is an awesome kit. A um, couple of nut drivers in here, all the stuff made in USA. One of my favorite kits. Um, I only use it when I'm on, um, on the roof pretty much because I am uh, have this bag. Behind that, I keep some gloves. I have little gloves everywhere okay and then I got I keep a soft blow hammer 
you know eventually it'll get so beat up to where I'll just warranty it out when it starts to become so mangled that it is unrecognizable but I love this little dead blow it's the perfect size for me this is a 20 ounce I just keep it down here at the bottom um, my multimeter this one is my ideal and I keep it loaded up with a alligator clip for the ground and then a regular probe for the positive but then I have the extra probes to do the opposite or if I want to go with two alligators or two probes in the pocket all right under here I have and I think this is a Malco it's a uh, it's a comb for uh, the fins and it's telling you how many fins per square inch 16 12 20 I found that I use a 16 the most and then it, it's rotatable you have an 18 and you put it for working with your air conditioners okay behind that I have two kits this one is my Kai Wheats. this is a, a different multimeter so my ideal is a clamp meter and it is the tight sight so I have a screen here and a screen here this works out great for air conditioners because depending on how you have to clamp the wire on the compressor or the, the wire harness you can only see the back of it so that works out perfect and then I have the Kai Wheats, which has the uh, thermal couple in here for temperature extra it came with an extra set of batteries and this is like the the smart meter it automatically detect what you're trying to measure and you don't have to uh, set it but if you want it to you can basically in the cell phone form factor it does have non-contact voltage and a flashlight on the back so that's the Kiwi's really enjoy that meter hadn't had a problem with it there's no leads in here because the leads are out there I use them for whichever that I need it and then we have one of my favorites this blue point kit and these this is a little socket set okay so let's get the camera right here So it goes up to 13 from 4 millimeters to 13. You know, high tooth count, quarter inch drive, and then you have a bit socket on the bottom, and they fit in some pretty tight spots. That's pretty small, okay? That's pretty. That's that's pretty tight. So a lot of times you got to get to a screw that's in between some stuff. You don't have much room. This, this is pretty nice but uh and it's offset get your knuckles out of the way while you're working with it uh, of course the ratchet is reversible so that's that blue point set also has that little extension this has been a great set guys i've been i've used this a whole lot and uh it's been holding up really good it's made in china and it's been and the case is great it's been doing good I don't use any of these pockets up here that you know I don't have a use for these but there's more pockets here another zipper thing here you got another d-ring here pockets down here I have more air conditioning combs this one is kind of adjustable for uh, stiffness you know you just slide this up and then this one gets used a lot just like this brush um, it's for straightening fins as well and I have a little level in here and then a nice little I think this is the OEM tools no this is the airs but it has a lot of different little bits has some hex you know so all of these quarter inch bits to supplement my uh, blue point kit so whatever bits I don't have in the blue point torques you know hex whatever it's in there rarely have to pull that out but it could save me a trip off the roof and then there's a big cavity in here for another kit that i used to keep in here but i've been slimming the bags down and if i hadn't used something in almost a year or only use it once in a year i kind of get rid of it so 
this can fit an entire organizer so there's a pretty big uh, space in here probably put tape in here instead of where I've been keeping it at but uh, yeah actually fits probably will but I normally keep the tape just kind of hanging out right here it's easy for me to grab it and uh, that's that's been working out for me and then of course my meter is sticks in that bottom cavity because there's a lot of space in that bottom cavity right there so I end up having to edit these videos a lot because of the camera angles on the uh, on the body cam all right so not a two whole of a lot in the back but you could put a lot more stuff in there if you want I'm trying to slim the bag down and then in the main compartment um, I have some bits and pieces I'll take off the strap that's a okay now let's go down so in, in this compartment there's some bits and pieces that's a magnet right there I have like pick uh, uh, looking for that I see why it's in here now I'm just get rid of it this is a Mac tools pry bar little mini pry bar set you can see it broke so the tip is broken off of this one um, I never worried about warranting it out because half the times I can't find them anymore but uh, I'll end up grinding grinding that down so I just have it you know banished in here and looks like some charge cables which I don't know why they're in here I'll be taking those out some glue and then the main tools okay so the main tools are in the main body of the front of the bag but most of the depth in the bag goes to the back side okay so uh, you could fit a lot more stuff in the back bigger things if you if you needed to but this works out for me it's easy it's close to the front of the zipper I can get to this stuff so what do we have cable cutters so uh, if you're doing a repair um, new cables and stuff on a uh, cable slide you have to, you got to use cable cutters to cut the cable without having them fray so that's what these are these are cable cutters this is a snap-on screwdriver kit and uh, screwdrivers picks and torques and then behind that we got the nipex knipex whatever twin grips I say nipex I know that's not how they pronounce it in Germany I have lived in Germany but I'm not German so I, I just say it like that and these are the uh, the twin grips had not really got much use out of these as extraction pliers because the tip is too big right here this is too wide and my vamp pliers are too short but the tip is narrow and it fits into a, a tight spot to where I can actually use them for screw extraction the handles are just really crappy on them and they pull off where these don't and the handles are too short on the vamp pliers and these are the right size but they made the top of this the head is just too big for using it in a uh, say like on a camper and where your inset trim is so basically every piece of track screw mold these are too big to go in there okay let's see somebody um, my sister's showing me that her truck does not have a hitch on it um, I'll have to look into that all right what else do we have guys okay so we got cable cutters screwdrivers old school wire strippers these are some that I got on a nice deal and they are uh, ideal brand I believe 
it says reflex though so but there are ideals i guess reflex is the model spring loaded these are the ogs man old school that's what i started off on back in my electrician days um as an industrial electrician with rivers plumbing and electric back when i was a really really young guy that's how i started off in that trade outside of working for my dad which we did you know basically general contractor so we did a little of everything okay so we got the wire strippers and then we got a couple uh double joint needle nose pliers okay 45s and straights as you can see i hope you can see I don't like this camera because I can't see the screen. The screen, but the battery life is so bad on it that the screen has to shut off to uh, conserve the battery, and I don't like that. I'll probably buy a GoPro or something or something else. Anyway, we got a scratch all by Mayhew, Craftsman inspection mirror. Now you get to see yourself. That's the camera I'm talking about. And a new addition. A little snap-on. I got an adjustable wrench in here. And it is the little snap-on 6-inch. Just a recent purchase. I swapped out a pair of Harbor Freight 8-inch ones for these. And now that's in there. And behind that, we got a... Husky flathead, husky screwdrivers. All my flatheads are going to be huskies because I had a whole set of these and they work fine. And a lot of times I don't run into a whole lot of flathead fasteners, so these are kind of getting doubled as pry bars. So I never bothered getting the snap on flathead screwdrivers for that. Slip joint pliers by Icon. I think these are like one of the snap on clones. They work fine, man. Got the talon grip. Uh, I'm not gonna buy the snap on ones because these are so similar and they work fine. All right, we got a uh, you know Craftsman magnet. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. Okay. I'll probably move that down there. Where I can kind of see it a little better right in front because it's so short. One of these are twin grips, and of course, uh, these Nipex don't buy these, they're horrible, uh, they don't work very well at all. Um, it's less than a 50 50 chance that these are going to work, but they're very expensive, and you can see the model number on these. And the handle feels good, and they've upgraded, and they put, like, metal plates instead of the plastic, and the blades are removable. I mean, like, this whole cartridge assembly can come out so it can be rebuilt when the blades get dull. But, man, it's just, uh, let's see, I'll, tr I'll do it on this uh, piece of wire here. Let me sn snip the wire, and uh, so it, it pulled it most of the way off on that one. This is probably about a 20, 20 gauge, uh, no, maybe not that much, might be 18 gauge. 18 gauge, it's bigger than 20. And if it would do that every time, I would be happy with them, man. If it would do that every time, I would just be so happy with them. But most of the times when I go to strip something, it doesn't work. Uh, what it's kind of good at is uh, Romex the outer sheath on the Romex is good for that but you know these things I never know if they're gonna work or not and uh, they're made in Germany they're Nipex but they suck they're awful what else what do we have here snap-on crimper strippers so a bigger pair with a crimper built in and a uh, has a little lock to hold them closed. So these are larger snap-on crimpers slash strippers. 
because this is a general bag I got to be able to do some of everything out of this bag and then I have besides the call coming in I have uh, hold this uh, mute that I got these from an auto parts store I believe they're Titans so they came out of O'Reilly they're awesome man they're good they work all I can say is they work guys got that long reach on them we got the icon flush cuts they work no complaints and then beside that we got some Cobras so let's move the flashlight which is a husky husky flashlight little pin light and then and these uh these tectons are kind of falling off they were in here but I didn't it's a it's a tecton pick set uh, pry bars uh. Uh, put these someplace else but that's what those are um, some uh, couple of pry bars by Tecton stick those over there and uh, then we have the uh, the Nipex Cobras right here I, I, I keep a pair of Nipex in every bag they make the best water pump pliers around that adjustment it's just these are just the best um adjustable pliers around man they they are they just are all right up here we got the uh miniature version of those uh snap-on ln 40 these are the 46s but you know, they, they used to, when they came out, they called them the beetle pliers. You know, parallel draw, you know, narrow head pliers. I can't really call them a needle nose. They're not really a needle nose, but uh, that's kind of what you would identify them as. And they are very awesome, good grip. Snap-on has a really good handle on their on their pliers and stuff. So um, that's what those are. And then some plastic tools, some other pry bars. Little, little trim tools, uh, blue point, maple. I believe this is maple wood. Yeah. Anyway, striking, little chisel scraper. You know, it, it's basically a scraper. It's walnut. It's not maple. Um, it has a chisel edge, but it's a uh, it's basically a scraper. Eh, getting a little loose, but still, still got a lot of life in it. I hadn't used it too too much because the stickers are still on it. You can kind of see the the part where I'm using it. But yep, yeah, we got that guy. And then this is a I think this allow makes these pry bars. Then so pry bars working with trim on slide rooms and stuff. So I have an assortment of different prying tools. Um, snap on. Uh, Ladies foot, this little small thing. I use it for a lineup tool. I use it for a lot of things. This is my favorite. This little uh, skinning tool. I have the Blue Point one. It's exactly the same as the the ones that you get off of Amazon. You know, same stuff. And then these little blue guys. These are made in the USA. Got them out of Home Depot. They hold up. They don't bend. I don't know what they're made out of, but I've really uh, put a lot of pressure on them and they hold up all right and then I have a uh, I think this is like a gear wrench SATA which is a sister company uh, it's just a it's in the apex tool group and uh, this is pretty good it's, you know an adjustable pry bar another pry bar uh, I, I remember seeing this on a snap-on truck and I didn't like the price for what it what the tool was and so I bought this one for uh, probably like twenty dollars and uh, it's pretty good so I can't complain about that and I just kind of keep that in there when I got to do some heavy-duty prime like stuff that's like I could put this under like a two by four frame and stand on it and this it's not going anywhere so that's what we got in the bag guys uh, 
this is a pretty awesome uh, bag that Vito has here and uh, I have nothing but good things to say about it so totally recommend it it's been holding up that's my update on it and I'll come back in a year or we got a t some more age on it and I'll give you a, another update for it but yeah this is the Vito Pro Pack Tech Pack RV Tech Pro out